All right, time to talk about the Leafs right now. They were hosting the Bruins last night in their final game before the NHL All-Star break. Giordano again, throws it in front, scores! It's Kelly Yarncrow! After falling behind by two goals, the Leafs pulled within one midway through the third, but they didn't get any closer than that. The Bruins added two more on their way to a 5-2 win. That snapped a three-game losing skid for the league-leading Bruins, so it would have appeared that the Leafs had a chance as the Bruins went in. Not on the best note, but they've come out on top. Uh, we just talked to Mike Krushelniski, former Leaf, who said that was a pretty brutal game for the team. In the meantime, let's take a look at the season so far on the road ahead for the Leafs. TSN Bardown's Eric Kirk joining us this morning. Eric, good to see you this morning. Uh, let's first of all talk about that loss to Boston. That was not an impressive effort for the Leafs going into the break. No, it, it really felt like the Leafs were chasing the Bruins the entire game, kind of from the second the puck hit the ice. Uh, the Bruins got on the board first, Leafs caught up. Bruins got on the board again, and that kind of just felt like the theme for the rest of the game. But if you're a Leafs fan, I don't think you can feel too bad about this loss. You're going to lose to the best team in the NHL sometimes. It's going to happen. you got to win against them earlier in the season. You're going to see them again down the season. What you really need to focus on if you're the Leafs is the schedule coming up, and you have five games against the basement of the NHL with two dates with the Columbus Blue Jackets, two dates with the Chicago Blackhawks, and one meeting with the rival Montreal Canadiens. You really need to win all five of those, and then that's how you cement yourself moving forward. Yeah, that, there's a lot of points on the line there. For sure, points the Leafs should technically be getting, but of course, you got to play the games. In the meantime, let's take a look at that. They've reached the halfway mark of the season right now. Eric, how, how are these Leafs this year performing? How are they measuring up to the expectations going in? I think this Leafs team has pretty much hit exactly what fans should have, should have expected of them to this point in the season. They're sitting third in the entire NHL right now, which Usually, as a fan, you hope that would mean first in your division. For the Leafs, that does not. Uh, they are second in their division behind the Bruins. Um, Nylander has been unbelievable for the Leafs. He's been really that missing piece that you kind of hoped you'd get from Nylander for years past. This year, above a point per game, right behind Marner for points per game. So the Leafs have done a great job at keeping uh, pace with where they should be, and it's kind of all up to playoffs, as it usually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was so much controversy over Neil and his contract a couple of years ago, but he's definitely playing up to it now. Of course, other highlights, Mitch Marner, he had a pretty impressive scoring streak going uh, partway through the first half of the season. And Samsonov's been pretty good in net too, right, Eric? What else stands out to you in terms of highlights for the team? Yeah, the, the great surprise going into the season was a lot of people were worried about the Leafs' uh, net presence and how they were going to keep the puck out of their own net. Well, they figured out a way to do it as they sit 24th in the league for goals against per game. So they're doing that in full. They're keeping the puck out of their net in game after game. So really the big surprise was Matt Murray went out and everyone thought Matt Murray would be the mm -hmm. starter for the Leafs. With Sansonov coming in behind him, he kind of had his own little Jack Campbell-like story where he was a very high first-round draft pick years ago, couldn't never find his footing, finds his way to the Leafs, and just starts going on a great run. So hopefully he can find his way into the playoffs, keeping this momentum. And uh, last night, just shake that one off and, and move forward. Right, yeah, you got to just play the next game and forget about what's happened. But let's talk about what perhaps, if we were thinking about a report card scenario here, Eric, what needs work? What do the Leafs need to do down the stretch to maybe win a playoff round or more this year? I think they got to just keep doing what they're doing. As frustrating as that sounds for Leafs fans who have seen this team keep doing what they're doing for years and years and years, it's this NHL playoff format's not going to change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So you're playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like, that's set in stone right now. Like, you you know that in a few months, the Leafs will play either the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Boston Bruins in the first round. So you kind of need to set your team up for success against those teams. You need to be able to play a little bit rougher when it comes to the, uh, the playoffs, like they did last year. But really, there's not much they can do to mm -hmm. change. They just need to outplay them when it comes to an elimination game in game six or a game seven. Yeah, get that grit and sandpaper ready, that's for sure. Okay, TSN Bardown's Eric Kirk. Appreciate the analysis this morning. Good to talk to you. We'll chat soon, I'm sure. Thank you. You too.